sorry, nothing is flipping the way I want it to. We'll get the technical difficulties out of the way. All right, let's start with the disclaimer here that, um, you know, just standard that this is accurate as of right now, uh, change and can be updated, especially in this crazy pandemic environment that we're in. So as Marie mentioned, this is like part two. I've got all of your overview of changes here, but this is going to be focused more on the stuff that is in that surgical CPT code range. Um, Marie, correct me if I'm wrong, but they could also go back and listen to yesterday's webinar to get updates on the other sections yep. of the CPT if they needed to. Correct. Yep. It's on the website. Awesome. Perfect. <laughs> All right, so I just want to, um, if you listened to this yesterday, same uh, spiel I gave yesterday, don't expect my counts to match what the AMA publishes as changes, because when they call it a change, they are talking about a change between the last publication of the book and the current publication. And so that includes all of the codes that are updated and changed throughout the year. We are focusing on the 2022 changes. Um, so my, don't, my numbers will not match, and that's um, just unavoidable. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to jump right into the surgery section here. We've got a quick little overview just so you can kind of see where the changes are. There are not a ton of changes to the surgery section this year compared to what there usually are, but this gives you a nice little overview of, of seeing where the actual changes are. You can see we've got a lot of changes relatively in the nervous system and the auditory system. All right, so let's just go through and talk about this stuff um, section by section. So there is only actually one revision in the integumentary section. And you can see what they did there was basically remove the strictly non-biodegradable and they've expanded it. So it can now include um, bioresorbable, biodegradable and non-biodegradable devices. So um, these are typically going to be your hormone replacement therapy uh, things. And there have also been notes put in there to instruct users um, to use uh, uh, that these are not going to include the deep drug delivery devices. Those are actually sitting in the musculoskeletal section at 20700 through 04. Um, but these are for the, obviously we're in the integumentary section. So these are for the sub-Q insertions. The one other change to the integumentary section that um, I don't have a slide on, it wasn't that big of a change, but they did just also post some instructions to the repair subsection, just to clarify that if you close wounds with um, adhesive strips or steri strips, that that's not separately reportable if that's the only thing that you're doing. And also that um, hemostasis and local and topical anesthesia are included in repairs. I don't think that's news, but they did kind of put it actually in the book. All right, so that was our nice big change for that. Moving on to the musculoskeletal system. They have actually um, deleted code 21310, which is closed treatment of a nasal bone fracture without manipulation. And they are now instructing that if, you, if this is what you're doing, there's no manipulation, there's no stabilization, and it's closed, that is going to be included in an e and code. It's not separately reportable any longer. And because of that change, um, they have also um, revise the descriptions on the other closed treatment of nasal bone fractures to include the words with manipulation. And you can see we have without and with stabilization, which we always did. They're just clarifying that this is with manipulation now. They also added the word, um, I'm sorry, replaced the word level with the word inner space, and that's just for consistency throughout the book. Not a big deal. They're not really changing much of anything. And you can see on the two bottom ones there, 2633 three and 34, we just removed the and segment part out of the um, description. And that's again just for consistency. They all say just interspace now at this point. 
All right, we have a big uh, new guideline section in the musculoskeletal. It's at the very front of the musculoskeletal section. And we're gonna go over some of this. Basically, it's doing a lot of clarification on the fracture and dislocation treatment. So they're clarifying that if you're casting, splinting, strapping for patient comfort, that that's not closed treatment. Okay? That would be application of a splint. Um, they also clarified that all services in the musculoskeletal section include the application and the removal of the first cast splint or traction device. If you're replacing them, removing, replacing, that is separately reportable. Um, and clarifying again, which I don't think is news, but putting it down in actual guidelines in the book, that there's no correlation between the type of fracture and the type of treatment. So you can have a closed fracture that requires open treatment. You can actually have an open fracture that is only using closed treatment, although I would think that would be pretty rare. Um, and if the treatment of the fracture is not found in the guidelines, you should use an EM code. So that's basically calling out, you know, what we said with that nasal bone fracture. More definitions and stuff that they put out there, which I really like. Um, there's a whole definition table to tell you that traction is application of force. It specifically defines skeletal traction as attaching to the bone. Skin traction can also be used, but that would apply directly to the skin and not actually go in and penetrate the bone. Close treatment means we didn't surgically open the site. Percutaneous skeletal fraction, sorry, fixation is not open or closed by definition. It's just fixation that actually goes across the fracture and it usually uses imaging guidance to uh, make sure that you're getting the fixation in the right place. Open treatment means could mean three different things. So basically it means that the site is open surgically to expose this, the treatment site. But notice that it can also mean that the wound is treated through the traumatic wound that already exists, or it can mean that you're treating openly with a nail or fixation device that you're accessing through a remote surgical site. So that's commonly the femoral fracture where you would put um, a nail in maybe up through an incision you make around the hip to treat a femoral fracture that's a little bit further down than that. Um, an external fixation is going to be the use of pins and wires to penetrate the bone, and they specifically define their uniplanar and multiplanar. So sounds, sounds basic, but I like the fact that they did um, call out that multiplanar is going to need wires and pins to hold together interconnected rings. Otherwise, you can't get the, the multiple planes treated. I thought I had one more slide there in the musculoskeletal section. So that is a lot of what has been added into the musculoskeletal section as far as definitions and that sort of thing. All right, so on to cardiovascular. We have three new codes to capture left atrial appendage exclusion procedures. So these are new codes, and it's all part of the new trend of the AMA to actually create paragraphs in their long descriptions. You can see that it tells you there that this is could be stapling, oversewing, ligation, plication, and clip. Um, it's basically done to, to treat atrial fibrillation or to mitigate thromboembolic complications postoperatively. Most commonly, it's going to be performed with other procedures that require a sternotomy or thoracotomy. So you can see that I've got two separate codes here. I have an open code for when it's performed independently. So this one probably isn't going to be used a ton. I also have an open code for if it's performed at the time of another procedure. This would be the one we'd be expecting most of the time. And then I have a third code there for if it's done thoroscopically. Okay, and that one doesn't matter whether or not it's done with any other procedure. Okay. Um, let's see, usually 
this is done with maze procedures and mitral valve and repair. So um, you'll notice that we've got the note there that it's not coded separately <clears throat> when done with those procedures. And that's in your book as well. All right, we also have three new codes to report repair of coarctation of the aorta or narrowing of the aorta. It's a birth defect in which the part of the aorta is narrowed. So we've got three codes here. They are broken down into, um, again, almost kind of the same way the other one is, except I have one code for um, stent placement across major branches. And give me a couple slides, we'll go into what that is. We have another code for stent repair, not crossing the branches. And then the third code is um, no stent required, it's angioplasty. So let's look at that a little bit more. We've got a little picture there for what the coarctation would actually look like, that little narrowed area. And some more notes for you here as far as um, what's, uh, what the codes break down into. So 33897 is for um, angioplasty, no stent required. The other two are for um, stent required. And here's some guidelines on what is included with these. So you'll notice that all three of them include um, any fluoroscopy used to guide. A diagnostic left heart catheter is included, all of the catheter insertions, all of the angiography. The stent insertions include any extensions. So if you have to place two or three stents, that's all included. And they also include um, angioplasty. So you don't want to try and code two of these, one for angioplasty, one for stent. Uh, and then I also listed out for you here, it's as well in the book, but just what the major uh, side branches are so that you know whether or not you're crossing any of those of the thoracic and of the abdominal aorta. All right, moving on, we also have two new add-on codes into this section. And I tried to put down here for you um, where, where you would use these with. So this one's gonna be with 33631 through 66. This is basically used to report transcatheter placement and the removal, it includes both, of a cerebral embolic protection device. So when you're doing those um, major TAVAR or TAVI procedures, you want to put, temporarily, you want to put a device in there to help catch anything that may break loose and go up to the brain, because that is not a good deal. So that is commonly done, and it's now got an add-on code for that, right? Um, as we said, it's used with 33631 through 66, and there are guidelines in your book in there. Um, also, a quick note, notice that this is plural, but it doesn't have to be. So if you place more than one device, the code is only reported one time. Uh, repair is also included in this code, but if you have to do extensive repair or replacement of an artery, you could report that um, additionally. Uh, the next code that we have is not um, listed as an add-on code, but it really would be an add-on code because it's harvesting of an artery for a cabbage procedure. So, uh, And it is to capture the endoscopic uh, harvesting of an upper extremity artery. Uh, remember, if they use uh, lower extremity arteries, that's already part of the procedure. But um, if they do it in the upper extremity, that is an add-on code. And this is intended to be unilateral. So it would use a modifier 50 if for some reason they harvested from both sides. All right, we deleted a couple of codes. The, val the pulmonary valvotomy, closed heart transfer ventricular. Um, they didn't mention this a whole lot. There wasn't a lot of um, discussion on this. So there is no replacement for that. 
And there's also no replacement on the closure of aortico left ventricular tunnel. We also revised a couple of codes, um, not a major revision to 33471. It's just, it used to be a child code of 33470 and it no longer is because that code's been deleted. So basically we just, the semicolon has been replaced with a comma indicating it's not a child anymore. And the 35600, needed a change because of the new code that was added. So before this didn't specify that it was an open procedure, it now does. So that's open, the, um, the uh, endoscopy one is the new code. Okay, that's enough for the cardiovascular section, I feel like. All right, we have a couple of new codes in the digestive system and one that and if you're if you do this, it's, I think it's a long time coming, the drug-induced sleep endoscopy. There was, there's not been a code for that yet, and people have kind of been making do with the laryngoscopy codes or the bronchoscopy codes or an ot uh, otolaryngology code. There is now a code to capture the more extensive um, procedure that this is. There's also notes in the book that tell you um, don't try and add on to this code for nasal endoscopy unless it's for a separate indication and don't report the diagnostic laryngoscopy or the nasopharyngoscopy with this. It encompasses all of that. Okay. Um, there's also a new code for the, the POEM procedure, um, which is, you know, well, exactly what it says. It's going in and actually cutting the muscles in the lower esophagus via transoral approach. It's usually done for um, achalasia or, or spasming of the esophagus. And it's not usually the first thing tried. So this is a, a less invasive way than what we've had before. Right now, this is an unlisted code, and now we have a code to report it. Um, there's also some notes in the book about um, not reporting it. If you do it um, via thoracoscopy, there's a different code. And don't also try and report the diagnostic um, esophagoscopy codes because this includes doing a diagnostic esophag um, exam of the esophagus first. Okay, we've deleted a couple of codes here because they just um, weren't used according to the AMA. So the revision of a gastroduodenostomy with and without vagotomy has been deleted with no replacement. So if for some reason you still do that, you'd have to look to the unlisted code. All right, moving right along, we are in the urinary system now. Um, we have four new codes that essentially got their promotion. They were category three codes of 0548T through 0551T. If I remember right, these are exact to the word. Um, there was no changes in the description. They just got promoted to new codes. So we have um, one code for bilateral insertion of the continence device one for um, unilateral insertion, one for removal, and one for adjustment. No changes there, they just have a better chance of getting reimbursed by all payers now. Okay, that was it for the urinary system. We have a few, um, <coughs> excuse me, re revised codes in the male genital system. Again, not huge revisions, these first two um, have had uh, an S, have had essentially the S put in parentheses, just so that everybody understands it doesn't have to be multiple complications. It could just be one, but if it's more than one, um, that's also covered in here. Okay. So they did that with all of these codes. Um, they changed the includes to include including when performed, just to clarify um, the fact that it doesn't have to be performed, it could be performed and it includes it when it is. And then they also 
removed what they called um, offensive language in here. So it no longer says repair of hypospadias cripple. It's now revision of prior hypospadias repair. Um, you know, just a little more politically correct language to it. No real change. Okay, onto the maternity care and delivery section. Uh, they deleted the code for treatment of ectopic pregnancy requiring total hysterectomy. This just really isn't needed anymore. It used to be more of a, a treatment of choice and it just isn't needed really anymore. So no replacement code for that one. I doubt anybody's doing it anyway, but it's gone. All right, the nervous system actually relatively had an awful lot of changes. Um, so we have two new codes for laser interstitial thermal therapy, or LIT. And here's your little paragraph. The difference here is um, one simple lesion and multiple or complex lesions. So this is actually, you know, they have to put the whole stereotactic head frame on um, and it uses uh, a laser fiber to actually target incredibly precisely um, a lesion that's in there. A uh, quick little note, I don't know that anyone would try, but these can't be reported together. So if you have multiple lesions, don't try to code this as a first one. Don't try to code this as the secondary. It's one or the other code. And we have some add-on codes to report decompression during spinal arthrodesis. So this would be for decompression on the same vertebral segments or inner spaces at the same time that you're doing posterior inner body fusion. This, uh, I don't know about you guys, but the spinal section gets incredibly um, complex to me because there's so many codes that vary by just, you know, a millimeter or so seemingly. Um, but there are a lot of good notes to help you out there. So there's some notes that say if you're doing 22630, for example, you don't code these codes because that already includes the decompression. Um, if you're doing decompression only to prepare the inner space for fusion, you're not going to separately report these. So that's a pretty um, important distinction and sometimes is really hard to get out of the documentation as to whether it was just to do the procedure you were intending to do or whether it's actually significant decompression that's kind of separate from the fusion. Um, as always, it's going to depend on how good your um, doctors document things. <clears throat> okay, I threw some definitions in here. This is not in the nervous system section. It's actually in the musculoskeletal section, but I thought it helped really well with these new codes and the changes that they've done in the nervous system. So this is in your book, but um, I wanted to call your attention that all this has been added and it helps me. So hopefully it helps some of you guys. It really defines what a corpectomy is, what a facetectomy is, for aminotomy, all of those kinds of things. And it's got really good notes. Um, kind of what we just said, that the fusion, I'm sorry, the decompression has to be separate from the fusion before you're going to separately code it. Um, these are not, there are some illustrations in the book. These are not the ones particularly in the book, but I really liked the way that these um, put things out as far as showing you where the facet joint is, and then you can kind of pair that with, okay, this is excision of the facet joint, that's what we would be talking about. These have some really um, good pictures as far as just what the parts that we would be looking at of the spine when we're doing decompression and excision and that sort of stuff. Okay, included just a couple more because the spine is so complicated and it looks way different from the side than it does from the top. So just for you guys to go back and reference um, at some point should you want to. All right, we also added three new codes for hypoglossal nerve um, stimulator procedures. Uh, don't get confused. The hypoglossal nerve is a cranial nerve 
And we do already have codes um, 61885 through 61888 that describe um, neurostimulator insertion into a cranial nerve. So I guess technically you could use either one, but if you are specifically doing the hypoglossal nerve, you want to come out here because um, apparently it's a lot more work, a lot harder to implant into the hypoglossal nerve. And it, you have to dissect the nerve. You have to identify branches that are coming off of the tongue. And it also captures some additional work because um, there's also placing um, a respiratory sensor as well as the electrodes. So that is why they felt that they needed new codes for this. And I also wanted to put a note, I believe this is in your book as well, but if you notice that this is both components, it's the respiratory um, sensor electrode and the electrode um, array. If you're only doing one of those, you would um, use a modifier 52. All right, still in the nervous system, we have two new codes for thermal destruction of the intraosseous basal vertebral nerve in the lumbosacral region. So that is really specific, but apparently, again, this is a lot more work if you're actually um, ablating the nerve inside the bone, that's the intraosseous part and in this region. So new codes for that as well. We deleted a bunch of codes that, again, I don't have a lot to say on because they kind of tend to skip over this in the AMA updates. They've just deleted them. They said they're really not used and they're gone. So these are all the same code, just in different um, areas and different types of, you know, one stage or two stage procedures. So the laminectomy with chordotomy, with sectioning of the spinothalmic tract, all of those have been deleted. Still in the nervous section, um, we have some revisions to codes. Again, not, not a big deal here. We added the word vertebral, um, I guess, just to clarify that the segment didn't mean anything other than vertebral. Sometimes I don't know why they do what they do, but um, it's usually for consistency throughout the book. Uh, 63197 is just no longer a child because those other laminectomy with chordotomy codes have been deleted. So minor change there. And the rest of these, the language has changed incision for to open. And again, that's just consistency throughout the book. The terminology that they use tends to be open. So didn't change anything other than that. I think that means we're finally done with the nervous system and we are over to the eyes. <clears throat> there are two new codes to capture combination cataract removal, intraocular lens insertion with insertion of an aqueous drainage device. Uh, according to the AMA, surgical practice more and more is treating dual conditions of cataracts and glaucoma. So that's what this would primarily be doing, would be treating these at the same time. So let me just flip through real quick. You probably didn't read those paragraphs, but basically we are talking about the glaucose eye stent inject. It's a new device. You can see it's, it's almost like little tiny grommets that go into the trabecular meshwork and you can plant, um, implant multiple. I don't know that they ever just do one, but they, depending on how severe the condition is, they can implant um, more. It's, it's to target the trabecular meshwork. It allows for better flow of the aqueous humor through that Schlem's canal. And it's done quite frequently now with the um, cataracts. So if it's done with the cataracts, it's those two new codes that we just saw on the last page. If it's done without cataracts, there's actually a category three code for that. We also have a new code for the lacrimal um, canaliculus drug eluting stent. It is a new code, but basically there was already this um, category three code. So it's just being promoted up to a category one code.
Oh, and I should mention, um, so this would be used for uh, multiple things. It could be um, steroids uh, for dry eye, glaucoma. It could be done for a lot of different things. Some need to be removed and some just disintegrate or fall out. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, it would be the same code for any of those. And it is intended to be unilateral. So it would take a modifier 50 if you did this on both eyes. Or it's not technically the eyes, but you know what I mean. The little, uh, the canaliculus of the eye. Give me a minute, I can speak. All right, we had two codes revised in the eye and ocular section. Um, again, not a big deal. We just removed the um, wording that said one or more sessions. Kind of was unnecessary, right? Because of course you have to do one session. You could be doing more than one. So they just took that out. And you'll notice here on this one also, they just removed the the laser or xenon arc. And that's just not to limit the code anymore, right? If it's photocoagulation, it's this code. It doesn't specifically have to be laser or xenon arc. It just allows more methodologies in the future. All right, done with the eyes and moving on to the ears. We have um, four new codes to capture osteo-integrated implant procedures. Uh, notice that these are um, magnetic. So we already have codes for insertion of osteo-integrated implants, but they didn't specify that they were the magnetic transcutaneous, right? So we have um, one code for implanting it, we have another code for revising it or replacing it. And then we have um, two codes for removal with the percutaneous attachment or with the magnetic attachment. So I just wanted to, to really quickly here just give you a, a, a quick, the Baja Connect would be the conventional one that we have already. It implants via um, a screw, a screw stick out of the skull, so it's not real clear, but that's the skull. Um, the Baja Tract is the new magnetic one. So it still implants, it's just all um, magnetic. So this would be the skull line there. Okay. Um, we deleted two codes which were the combination of the insertion of the osseointegrated implant with mastoidectomy. And the AMA has now said that those should be separately reported. So you would now go to one code to report the implantation, and then you'd also go look at your mastoidectomy section and report the appropriate code uh, that was performed in order to capture that. And um, I I believe they did that because it's not one standard. There could be all different levels of mastoidectomy that's done, and that's just going to allow for better reporting of that. So those codes are gone. Last but not least, we revised two codes in the auditory section, and we they just changed the wording. It no longer says temporal bone. It now says skull, which just allows, you know, what if it's most of the time it is the temporal bone, but what if it's not? This allows you to um, anywhere in the skull, put that on there. And then because of the changes that we just talked about, there is no longer a code for with mastoidectomy. So they removed the without mastoidectomy language because none of them are going to include mastoidectomy anymore. All right, normally I would not put the medicine section in this, um, in this presentation. We went over it yesterday because it's in the 9,000 section, but a lot of places do um, soft code this. So we did talk about this yesterday. We're going to talk about it again today. It's all of the catheterization procedures um, for cardiac catheterization for congenital anomalies. 
So we have a lot of different codes here, and these are now separated by um, whether they're normal native connections or abnormal native connections. You'll notice that the left heart cath, it doesn't matter, those are normal or abnormal. Um, but the others, anything involving the right heart catheterization is big, broken down into normal or abnormal native connections. Um, here's what our normal native connections are. Here's some examples. It's when the blood goes the right way, the way you would expect it to go through the heart chambers and the great vessels. So there's a couple of examples. Um, an isolated atrial septal defect, an isolated ventricular septal defect or a patent ductus arteriosus would be considered normal. Abnormal would be when there are some kind of alternate connections for the blood pathway. So there's some examples of those. This isn't all inclusive, but these are some pretty common ones. Single ventricle transposition, tetralogy of flow or valvular atresia or an unbalanced AV canal defect. Um, I like my pictures. I just think this explains things way better. So this would be um, a ventricular septal defect, but the blood still goes the way you would expect it to. It's coming in through the right atrium, going to the right ventricle, up to the pulmonary arteries, coming back oxygenated, um, going through the left atrium, left ventricle, and out through the aorta. There's a little mixing here, but the flow is still the same way, so that's normal. This is a tetralogy of flow, and in this case, we actually see that the pulmonary valve is so stenotic that the blood can't go that way, and so it's being forced into the aorta. So that is what we call an abnormal connection. All right, there are also two new added codes in the cardiovascular section. Um, they're in the uh, congenital heart section, but this one in particular, you know, if you read their paragraph description here, you'll see that this is for 3D echo done during transesophageal echo for any indication or during transthoracic echo for the congenital cardiac anomalies. So you would not use this if you're doing a, a a transthoracic echo for any indication other than congenital. And they tell you exactly here um, what they're doing. Assessment of the chambers, the valves, the appendage, the septum, and well, those septums. Okay. Again, we've got the notes down here for, um, it can be added to TEE for any indication, those codes, or transthoracic for the congenital anomalies. K93598 okay, is used with codes. Um, I just saw I have a typo here. Darn it, Marie, I thought I caught them all. This should be 93593. Um, no, I'm lying. These are, these are separately reported when the cardiac cath is done for congenital heart defects due to variability in the cardiovascular anatomy. So those can be separately reported. All right, of course, because we added all those new codes, we're deleting all of the existing ones. So anything that was just the congenital um, cardiac anomalies catheterization is all being deleted. And now basically you have a choice of those two that we were looking at. So the normal or abnormal connections. Kind of just goes hand in hand with stuff. And the indicator dilution studies are being deleted. Those are now going to that one new code of the 93598. So they're still reportable. It's just with um, a different code. Okay, we are also revising and making bigger paragraphs here, um, the ablation codes. So these are all the EP ablation codes. You know, this one is the treatment of the supraventricular tachycardia. This is the treatment of the VTAC. Um, and this one is just the um, EP exam. 
they are being revised basically to better clarify what is included. So you can see that we're adding on that these include the catheter ablation, the um, intracardiac EP mapping, the left atrial pacing, and the recording when performed. So it doesn't mean they all have to be performed, but they are now included. They're clarifying that those are now included when they are performed. Right, and these notes are in your book too, but that's basically what we just said. So they're clarifying that they include, these codes include 3D mapping, left atrial pacing, um, transeptal catheterization, ICE and EP evaluation can be reported when they are done separately. Okay. Like I said, they have a really nice table that they put in this section to actually um, tell you exactly what would be bundled, what would be done um, separately, and what just wouldn't ever be performed with those procedures. So if you code these types of things, go, go take a look at that table. It's a really nice little table. All right, and that is going to bring us to the last section. I don't have every single code that's added. Some of them are in yesterday's presentation in the, in the CDM section, but we really have a lot here as we typically do. So 0671T, um, if you remember, um, that's the one that I said is the aqueous drainage device, the Glaucos stent, if it's not done with cataract insertion. 0672T, this is in clinical trial right now. It's, it's the um, Vivev procedure. It's in a pursuit clinical trial right now. So there's probably not a lot of you doing that yet. 0673 is for laser ablation. It's a new minimally invasive outpatient procedure um, compared to the traditional open surgical. It's reported only one time per session. You'll notice that it's got our fun little um, S in parentheses there. So it doesn't matter how many nodules you do, it's only reported once. Um, these new codes are for the laparoscopic uh, insertion, replacement, repositioning of a diaphragmatic stimulation system. So this is um, the VIS-1 device. It's used for heart failure patients. It stimulates the diaphragm to contract to improve the cardiac filling and output. Basically just helps your heart by making sure that your um, diaphragm moves in sync with the heartbeat to basically provide more room and, and help things out. Um, I can't remember, honestly, if this one is still in clinical trial, but it's probably not being done in a ton of places yet. Uh, same thing we just talked about. They, every time they add one of these, it comes with a lot, about 10 new codes for the repositioning, removal, replacement, all of the different services that are done with it. And um, I added the interrogation and the programming with those, but these are all the same thing we've just been talking about. All right, we have a new code for um, histotripsy of malignant hepatocellular tissue. So you notice that is for malignant indication only. It uses thermal energy. It's a fairly new deal. Um, this would be for those patients that, and it's the vast majority of patients who can't have their liver tumors um, surgically resected because it's, I mean, that's a very delicate area. So this should allow for um, a whole lot more people to actually have um, malignant liver tumors ablated. It's really cool. Um, Histosonics is the company. There's only one company at this point that does this. Uh, injection of posterior chamber of eye medication. Just a quick reminder that the posterior chamber is the area behind the iris and in front of the peripheral portion of the lens. So if you're injecting there, you have a new code for that. And 0707T is for injection of bone substitute material into the subchondral bone defect. 
Okay, so don't confuse that with um, some of the other codes that are not the subchondral. There are notes, I believe, to not report this along with arthroscopy of the joint. Uh, it includes apparently the arthroscopy of the joint because it does say arthroscopic assistance down there. And it also includes the um, fluoroscopy. So it says including imaging guidance, it wouldn't be reported with 77002. All right, we are deleting a bunch of codes. Um, the We've talked about this now, I feel like several times that anterior segment aqueous drainage device, it's no longer here. It's either the 66989, 66991, or the 0671T. Okay, corneal incisions was always an add-on code. They've decided now that they can just, that that is included enough in the other procedures and doesn't need its own separate code. We can already, um, no, we didn't, I'm lying. The GI tract imaging has a replacement now. It graduated up into the 9,000 series. And the drug eluting implant, we kind of already talked about that one too. That's got its own new code. Um, Let's see, we already talked about that one. 0451T, no direct replacement for that code. Uh, I don't I don't know exactly why that one has been deleted, but it's gone at this point. And these are all the exact same thing, just as we talked about those multiple codes, insertion replacement that all go along. Um, removal, removal, removal. This whole section has been taken out without direct replacement. Gone, gone, gone. And these are the programming and interrogation that go along with that. 046667 and 68 previously reported the chest wall respiratory sensor electrode. Um, those now are going to be included in the procedures that we were talking about that include insertion of the neurostimulator and the respiratory sensor. It's all included now in those um, overall procedure codes that were earlier in the presentation. And I feel like we already talked about this when we talked about the new codes in the urinary section. So these are exact verbatim word for word replacements with category one codes. All right, and last but not least are um, revisions. So these, the first four, I guess it is there are essentially the same revision for consistency. We've taken out the um, reference to high energy. Okay. Um, it's just current practice not to differentiate between these when they're done for ESWT services. So high energy is out of there and, you know, big deal. They added the word and and the word the just again, to be a little bit more standard with things. And 0621T is just no longer um, a parent code because uh, another code has been taken out of there. So no big deal. It's now its own. It's not, um, it's not a parent. And so they just removed that semicolon. All right. And I think that does it. We do have a little bit of time. I, it does look like, it looks like there's just a request to add the um, ablation table to the slides. Yeah, the reason I didn't do that is because it's massive. I couldn't figure out a way to do that and fit it on the screen and still make it to where you could actually read it. Um, 
So I can try and see what I can do there, but it definitely wouldn't be pretty because it's a huge, massive table, which is kind of why I put it in Word format as far as what was included and what wasn't. Hey, Jen, is there a way we could put it into a, a PDF document and then I can post that on the website with the slides? Would that be better? Yeah, I can, I can certainly try and do that. I'm going to have to... Um, pull it out of the documentation because it is in the book but yes we can gotcha. we can maybe do that okay um and then it looks like we have something that pertains to yesterday a quick explanation of how pla codes are used when coding um that's kind of broad but um the couple of things that i can I can think of with that are specific to PLA codes are the fact that they are unique to a given lab and for a given test. So in Appendix O and in the slides yesterday, I put what that given lab test was for each of those codes and what the, um, what the lab is and what the proprietary test name is. The other thing is, and I know this gets um, a little confusing, because Medicare has different rules than what the AMA has for the PLA codes. So according to the AMA, if there is a PLA code, it takes precedence and it has to be used. And CMS doesn't necessarily say that because they don't um, recognize the PLA codes. So in some cases, there are those things. But um, yes, all of my slides should be uh, available. Anybody that attended, you should be getting a copy of this. I don't, Marie, I may let you, because they're asking about whether they're going to get the slides and have access, and you know that way better than I do. Yeah, so the slides are actually available on our website right now. Um, and after this presentation, by end of day today, we'll send out an email. Um, that has the link to the recording of the presentation and the slide deck. We just host them on our website and then you can pull them and download them from there. Um, I can post the link in the um, chat box really quick. It's just vitalware.com slash resources slash webinars. And then you can find all of our webinars there, um, past and upcoming. I hope that helps. Yeah, perfect. And we do have one more tomorrow that's kind of already been said um, as far as from a physician point of view. So that one includes stuff I don't go over so much, like um, e m code changes and RVU changes, that kind of stuff that would pertain to the professionals. So. Oh, sorry, I did. There is one more question that just came in. We do have a little bit. So uh, if the question is, if an ortho console places a splint, do we still code the closed treatment? And according to the AMA, that's going to depend on why they are placing the splint. So if that ortho comes in, and I'm going to assume fracture or dislocation here, because that's what all this pertains to. So I'm going to say most of the time when you're calling in the orthopedist, it's because they're actually going to be managing that fracture. So key things that you would look for is um, they're going to follow up with that uh, orthopedist. Um, they may or may not do additional treatment. You won't know that at the time. But if that if that orthopedist is going to follow up from them and they are assuming care of that fracture, I'll just use fracture, could be dislocation, then yes, that would be considered a closed treatment. And this, I know this is, I understand where they're coming from, but when you think about a lot of times the documentation we have to deal with, this is going to be a real ticky tack thing sometimes, I think, because, yeah, if if the patient comes in with a broken non displaced, which is the only time I could think of this applying <laughs> broken non displaced and we just place a splint. Most of the time, I would think that's going to be actual treatment, right? We don't want it moving. It's not just going to be patient comfort. But if for some reason the documentation tells you that is patient comfort only, that would be a splint application. Otherwise, it's going to be treatment of the fracture. 
hopefully that clears that one up. I think that's it. I think that's it. A couple of questions on where they would get the CEUs. And again, that's probably you, right? Yep, that is, they're going to be sent out in the follow-up email by end of day today. Um, you can just reach out to us tomorrow if you haven't received them. Sometimes the organization's firewalls block them or just other, you know, technical issues. So let us know if you don't receive them tomorrow. Love technical issues. Yes. Right. I think that's it. Awesome. That's all that I see too. So I guess that wraps us up. Um, again, just to repeat, we will send out the email today um, by end of day today with the CEUs and the link to the recording and presentation, um, recording of the presentation and slide deck, sorry. Um, again, if you don't receive that, just reach out to us. Um, sometimes they get blocked, so you have to reach out. Um, you can let your IT know if that's a problem too, and they can probably help you out. Uh, don't miss our webinar tomorrow, and we have a few in the upcoming weeks, so check out our website to register for those. And have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thanks.